The Elder Scrolls series is one that is steeped in a lot of lore and characters to create a story. Skyrim continues that trend with new and old characters alike. We have seen a number of recurring characters through the years with Uriel Septum, Barbus, and so much more. And what is up guys, Ange from the Den Men here, and today we will be going over our top 5 recurring characters that we see in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. There are a lot of them out there, so if you are excited, make sure you hit that like button and comment which recurring characters are your favorite. But with that being said, we have a lot to go over today, so get comfy, grab that bottle of Hunting Brew Mead, and let's get right into the video. Coming in at our number 5 spot, we have one for those who played through Oblivion would know well, with the old speaker of the Dark Brotherhood. Lucien Lachance was a high ranking member during the Oblivion game and devoted his life to the Assassin organization. He was a speaker for the Night Mother in the Cyrodiilic chapter of the guild and would be a loyal servant in life and in death. To keep a long story short, Lucian was believed to be a traitor to the Dark Brotherhood and was falsely sentenced to the Void, but his story does not end there. Fast forward to the Fourth Age and we get to meet the Speaker again, but this time in a different manner. During the Dragonborn's quest in the Dark Brotherhood, you are able to find Lucian after the player completes the contract of Vittoria Vici. The old speaker becomes somewhat of a follower with the power to summon a spectral assassin to your side once per day. This ability lets you interact with the fabled legend of the Dark Brotherhood and is a good callback to the Oblivion game. Our next one is somewhat of a fan favorite and can be found in more than just two games. The player first meets him on a prisoner ship where the Nereverine first lands in Morrowind. Saint Jeb is somewhat of a holy character because of his deeds to correct his wrongs. He made it his mission to serve the people of Morwen by eradicating the Wing Menace, also known as the Cliff Racers. Jeb would eventually complete his task and would be commemorated for his efforts. The living god Vivek would even ascend him to the level of Saint where he would be celebrated all throughout Morwen and in the city of Chadenhall with a fair to honor Jeb for his noble deeds. The next time we would hear of the saint's whereabouts was during the Oblivion Crisis. At this point, Jeb had moved on from Morwen into the city of Kavach, where things would get much worse for the saint. During his time in Cyrodiil, he would begin to write his autobiography, which is a 26 volume epic all about Saint Jeb. He would be writing in his house when the Oblivion Gate would open, and the start to the Oblivion Crisis would begin. During that time, Jeb would face off against Dramora and be soul trapped and would never be seen in the mortal world again. The Dongar DLCs we would pick up his story again with the Dragonborn traveling to the Soul Cairn to look for Serana's mother, Valerica. It is here where we would meet up with the Saint again with him not even knowing he was dead. With Jeb learning this, he would ask the Dragonborn to help write his opus and bring it to the mortal world. By doing this, St. Jeb would be remembered for his noteworthy actions and never forgotten about again. The Dark Elf is one that goes all the way back to the game Morwen, and to hear that he was there during the Oblivion Crisis and seeing him in Skyrim was amazing to say the least. At our number 3 spot, we have someone who is considered to be the most powerful wizard in House Telvanni, and some consider him to be the most powerful in all of Morrowind. Master Neloth is a Dunmer mage living out of the giant mushrooms of Tel Mithrin on Solstheim, but the first time we meet him is all the way back in the game Morrowind. During the Elder Scrolls 3, he resides in the mushroom tower of Tel Naga and Sidrith Mora. Some time before the eruption of Red Mountain, he left the island of Vardenfell and moved to Solstheim. It was around this time that Hearthstones began to appear around Solstheim and Neloth became a leading expert on the topic. Neloth has many interests including staffs, Hearthstones, and even the Daedric Princes. In particular, Hermaeus Mora with his relics of the Agma Infinium and Black Books drew a lot of interest. This brings us to the Dragonborn DLC where we get to meet the eccentric wizard and help him with his research. Neloth is one of the most powerful wizards in the world, and it is nice to see him from all the way back in The Elder Scrolls III. 
Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have one of the hardest bosses in the Elder Scrolls V. Found on the island of Solstheim, we have a hidden encounter that can happen against the frost giant Karstag. We first meet the King of the Reiklings during the Blood Moon DLC for the Elder Scrolls III where we face off against him in one of Hercene's hunts. He is one of the harder foes during the Morrowind game, but in the Elder Scrolls V, he is definitely taken up a notch. How you actually face Karstag is pretty simple, with first having to travel through the glacial cave to retrieve his skull. Once obtained, you must take it to the castle Karstag ruins where we fight the frost giant one last time. Place the skull on his throne and the battle will begin. The ruins will begin to shake and a spectral version of Karstag will appear. It is quite a difficult fight with Karstag using many different moves to try and claim victory. He swings around a giant club and when he slams into the ground, it acts like an unrelenting force shout. Occasionally during this attack, a giant blizzard will begin to cover the arena and do damage to both health and stamina. Karstag also employs a permanent frost cloak which makes it difficult to get close to the giant. When Karstag begins to be attacked, he will summon three ice wraiths to help him in battle. He does have a great amount of regeneration and is immune to all frost, poison, and paralysis damage, but he does have one weakness to fire. Karstag is a challenge to many Dragonborns out there, but it was amazing to see him return for the Dragonborn DLC. And finally, at our number one spot is of course the Khajiit, Maik the Liar. This character has been seen throughout many of the Elder Scrolls games from Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, and even the Elder Scrolls Online. It is crazy to think that one character could potentially span multiple eras in the Elder Scrolls universe from the second all the way to the fourth with Skyrim. I say potentially because Maik can be heard saying that his father was also called Maik, as well as his father's father. This could explain why he can be found throughout so many of the games, but as we all know, he is a liar. Maik is a fan favorite when it comes to characters in the Elder Scrolls games, and him popping up randomly from time to time, giving funny dialogue options, just makes it that much better. Recurring characters are unique easter eggs that remind players of older games what they experienced during their time in that province. From Karstag to Lucian, there are a couple of different ones that elevate the experience and a good callback to past titles. I expect they will continue this trend through the Elder Scrolls 6 and beyond, but until that happens, we will just have to speculate on everything we could possibly see. But that is all for me now though guys, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe, comment any videos you want to see in the future, and I'll see you all next time.